Rub up your engines. Adam Rogers says, Scotty, what I do is purposely run out of gas two to three times a week because I want to see how far the car can go on empty. Is that hiring it? Yes, it is. Do not do that. One, if there's any crud in your gas tank, the crud will go to the bottom, and then you'll suck the crud off the bottom. But the main thing is, if you actually run out of gas until it stops running, all modern cars have their fuel pump inside the gas tank. The gasoline that lubricates the electric pump. Sounds crazy, but the gasoline flows through the pump and it lubricates bearings. You actually run out of gas and the car stops running. That means your fuel pump sucked air. When it's sucking air, there is no gasoline lubricating the bearings and it can quickly burn out the fuel pump. Fuel pump replacements on some cars can be close to a thousand bucks or more. Don't do it. It's not a good idea. <laughs> now you know why. Dang Lockwood says, Scotty, are the Broncos 89 to 96 a bad investment? Well, you know, basically most cars are horrible investments because you put your money in and they just go down in value as time goes on. You know, that's just how cars are. If you're talking, especially in 89, and if the body wasn't rotten, you buy an old vehicle like that, you want to make sure the frame isn't rotten and it doesn't have any problems. You want to check that out first. It could be a decent investment because people like collecting older vehicles. And if the body's solid and not rotten away, and you want to fix it up or you want to put bigger engine in it, you can do that on those old vehicles. They can be fun. Now, just of course, don't do what a lot of people do, which is put too much money in a car. They overinvest in a car and they never get it back. If you like an 89 Bronco and you want to fix it up and drive it around, hey, and it's not rotten, the frame's not all rotten away, get it. You can have some fun with it. Royal Purple or OEM oil filters. The Royal Purple are high-end oil filters. They're excellent oil filters. As far as I know, Royal Purple doesn't make them. Somebody else makes them, like Mobile One, high-end synthetic oil filters. But they don't make them. You know, any high-end filter is generally pretty good. If you're curious, do like I did in my video that I was talking about that explains which oil filters are good, which you should buy, is get an oil filter sometime, get a hacksaw, just cut it in half, and you can see the difference between a cheap one and a good one. You see the good ones have higher quality steel parts instead of plastic, and they have thicker, more pleats of filtration material. Just, uh, you know, they cost more and they're better made. David Croc says, would you daily drive a Mazda Miata? Well, I wouldn't because they're girly cars. <laughs> they have the image of being girly cars, or the girly sports car, you know? That's the image that they got. That said, they are fun to drive. I like driving around when I work on my customers. Miatas. They've made them for decades. They're very reliable cars. I personally think they stink with the automatic transmissions. I'd want a standard because when I work on the automatic ones, they're dogs, and when they're old, generally they fall apart. Mazda makes pretty crappy automatic transmissions, but their standard transmissions are pretty much bulletproof. They're excellent. They can go a really long time. And they are fun to drive. They're a fun, cute little sports car, if you don't mind the girly image that they have. <laughs> Stephen Beatty says, I got a 2017 Explorer 2.3 EcoBoost. How good are the GDI motors? The earlier ones, eh, they had a few problems here and there. If you do buy a GDI motor, be religious about changing the oil. Don't get this BS that you can change it every 10, 20,000 miles. Change it every 5,000 miles religiously on a vehicle like that because it's got more pressure with the injectors, turbochargers, more strain on the engine. I would religiously change the engine oil every 5,000 miles and never let the temperature gauge get warm and ruin one of those engines because they can last if you take care of them. But if you don't, they're money pits. The customers of mine that don't maintain their cars and bought those things, they had engine problems as they aged, but the ones that took care of them, they're still having good luck with them. Ted Richardson said, do rim protectors work? Would you put them on your cars? I wouldn't put them on my cars because they're ugly as can be. I wouldn't want to ruin the look of the thing, and I know how to drive so I don't hit curbs all the time. I mean, they're a cover over it, and if you got some maniac that's grinding into the curb, it's going to grind those off or knock them off real fast and still eat up the rims. They're ugly. The whole point of fancy wheels is they're fancy wheels. If you put some ugly rubber protector on it, whoo wee I had a guy from Russia just sent me a set of different colors. Green, yellow, red, ugliest looking thing I ever saw. <laughs> You're not going to stop any big damage anyways. Your best bet, you have a car like my wife's old Toyota Matrix, fancy alloy wheels, but the tires sit out a lot more than the wheels. So if you go slow and you rub on a curb, you just rub a little of the rubber off the tire and it doesn't touch the rim. That's the best way to go. Best protection is to have rims that are inside the tires. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.